episode three of our epic Quicksour homebrew journey, a journey that's taken several unexpected turns. We've brewed not one, but two sours using different techniques in a bid to brew the perfect beer to complement Square Root Cola and recreate the classic fizzy cola bottle sweet. The first beer is a dry hopped kettle sour with lemon drop and motoeka hops, while the other is a Philly sour that's about to get dosed with a tree full of cherries. And that brings us to last week's episode, which was left on a cliffhanger. And by that, I mean me covering our beloved grandfather and Clint film while um, night fell around me. But anyway, if you haven't seen that video where we get to the point where we start the kettle souring process, then watch that up here. Otherwise, let's plow on with today's episode in which I'm gonna take this, which has been souring for about 60 hours. So I finished later than I intended on Friday evening, which is the way that most brewers do this, waited over the weekend having pitched that lactobacillus culture. And now it's a beautiful Monday morning, no such thing. Um, and I'm gonna be boiling this up, that kills the lactic bacteria, and I'm gonna be adding hops as normal. So from this point, it, it's an ordinary brew. Okay, let's get this cling film off. Cue dramatic music. <laughs> ah. it smells like yellow fruit pastels. Okay, so we've come to the second boil of this brew. The first one was obviously really quick and this one's a proper boil. We're gonna be adding hops over an hour. Uh, the first thing that's going in is five grams of Magnum. And then in an hour's time, I'm gonna be bringing it down to 80 degrees to the whirlpool temperature and we'll be adding these two. So these are lemon drop and motueka. Um, this is the motueka. Loads of lime. Uh, and then hopefully this is gonna be all lemon. Really sweet and Really lemon juicy, unbelievable. It smells unlike any other hop I've ever put my face into. So I haven't just picked these varieties because of their lemon and lime stuff that's gonna to add to that citric tang. It's also because they're both very modern, very um, sort of high aroma hops, but they also have very, very low alpha acids. So they're around five, six, 7%, which is, you know, half of sort of the big, big West Coast style hops. So hopefully it's gonna impart really low and smooth bitterness, more sort of like the, the noble, soft, either British or, or Central European kind of hops, uh, while still adding loads and loads of aroma, both from the Whirlpool at 80 degrees and indeed the 80 grams uh, of each variety that's gonna be going into the fermenter uh, in about a week, 10 days time. So in goes that, and let's go. <laughs> So ends the longest brew I've ever done and probably intend to ever do. That was four days, two days of hard work and two days of just anxiety. But it's all done, it's safely transferred at a lovely 20 degrees, which is the right temperature for my USO5 yeast. What you can see here is our beautiful dry hops. It's got a gorgeous color to it. I'm really happy with that. I hope it stays that kind of lovely burnished orange uh, that we've got. The first test I'm gonna do is pH to see how successful those 60 hours uh, on the Helveticus lactic culture was. If it's still a four something, I'm gonna be very upset. 3.1, there we go, boom. So the other test is of course the gravity. My gravimeter's stuck to the bottom. There we go. <laughs> so that's ended up at 1042. So that should land somewhere around four and a half percent. So next, uh, this is gonna ferment for about 10 days. I'm then gonna uh, crash it, dry hop it, just like I would making an IPA. Uh, the next thing I need to do is check on my Philly sour beer and see if it's time to add not one, not two, not three, but four kilograms of delicious cherry peel. <laughs> So it's 24 hours later, and as you can see, and probably hear, the USO5 has gone to town incredibly quickly, which is great news. Uh, and our Philly sour 
uh, is coming out of its peak fermentation phase, so it's starting to slow down. It might be starting to clear up some of the mess it's made, and it's time to supercharge it with an absolute mother load more sugar. So these are my cherry purees that are gonna be going in. Each of these packs are one kilogram, so it's gonna equate to about 200 grams per liter of fruit, which is at the very top end of what most sort of traditional, you know, crisp, clean, citrusy, lemony uh, kettle sours would have and quite a long way below where you'd end up with those really soupy triple fruited style um, ghosts. These are called Funkin purees. Um, they're made for professional mixologists, people who make cocktails. Um, actually finding small batches, I wanted to use a really artisan puree, I wanted to use British fruits, but unfortunately it's really hard to find that in small quantities, I guess because people like me that just wanna have four kilograms of it, you know, there aren't many people like me. Um, so I had to settle for this. I say settle for it. It's still, I know the origin of the fruit. I know where it's made. I know that it's got nothing in there except sugar and cherry, and it's only 10% sugar. Having never used one of these, I don't know quite, ooh, how runny it is. It's quite runny. There we go. Put that lid back on. That's another thing. You don't have to use them all in one go if you keep them refrigerated once they're open. I mean, that's great. You can see little bits in there, uh, lots of fibre and stuff like that, so we know that it's it's made of whole fruits. I could just drink that as a juice. That's absolutely marvelous. Just dawning on me how much four kilograms of fruit puree is. So um, remember to leave headspace in your fermenter for that and the inevitable Krausen that's gonna be uh, growing like the thing out of this. So I've just taken the gravity readings of both beers. The cherry one, which I'm not gonna show you because I don't wanna spoil the color, uh, has come out at 10.10. And then the uh, my dry hop sour's finished at 10.08, 10.08. So a little bit drier and I've just had a little sample of it. Pretty excited about how that one in particular has come together. Um, as you can hear, uh, my chiller is absolutely going crazy because I'm now crash chilling them both. Uh, once the cherry one's been crashed for two days, that'll be ready. Uh, but my kettle one, I need to give it uh, need to give it a little bit more time. I'm going to do the big dry hop that will really finish off that beer and really make it sing. But it's already tasting really good, really zesty, nice and sour. But yeah, the gravities are right, so it's just a couple of days, and then I'll be bottling it and getting it over to square root. And here we are at the end of what Brad quite accurately described as a harebrained scheme. This has been the most stressful homebrew experience I've ever had, except for maybe the first time I homebrewed. That was a complete disaster like most people's experiences. So I'm super intrigued to see whether the extra effort was worth it, whether I'm gonna get a more complicated, richer, fuller, sour character out of this one than I am out of the Philly Sour. In a way, I kind of hope I am, because otherwise I should have just done both with the Philly Sour yeast. So let's start with the one that I was kind of brief to make rather than the surprise one I've thrown in. Um, so this was kettle soured three days using uh, Helveticus from Lalamond, and then it was fermented just with straight up USO5. Uh, it's 10 grams per litre. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of aroma of that. There's, there's, there's loads of candied lemon, almost like, like almost synthetic levels of lemon, which is amazing. So that's probably the lemon drop. Definite lime character, definite, you know, that really tangy, like, uh, kind of note to it, which is hopefully come from the Motoeka. Wow. That's really not bad. It's not as acidic as I thought it might be, um, given that it claimed it was 3.1. Um, it's actually got a lovely rich body to it still from that wheat and it's got loads, loads of really citric orange juice kind of character. Real orange juice, you know, more kind of orangey than lemony kind of character to it, which actually might play really, really well with the Coca-Cola. Um, I think 
if I were to do it again, I'd want to get a little bit more sourness in there. Um, I've kept the carbonation relatively low because I didn't want to add more carbon carbonic bite to it, but actually could have done with a little bit more. But in terms of the actual character that I've got from the hops and from the, uh, from, from the Helveticus, I'm blown away by that. I'm absolutely delighted. So now let's move on to my secret beer, my cherry sour, which was fermented uh, with Philly sour yeast. Again, the head has died completely. That's to be expected with a sour beer at this point. Okay, interesting. So it's kind of spicy. There's a slight spice element to it that I think must be the Philly sour yeast character. Just a, a rich, um, stone fruity, spicy, mold kind of character to it, I think. Uh, that actually goes really well with the cherry. Um, I've started with that unusual thing, but there's a ton of cherry on there. It was four kilograms, so it's about just shy, well, around about 200 grams per litre of cherry, and it smells amazing. There's even, even though there's no stones in there, there's that little hint of, of um, marzipan there that's sort of just suggested by the, the heavy cherry character. Let's give this a go. Interesting. So yeah, definitely lots of complexity, but not in the way that you'd expect from a cherry sour. Loads of um, richer, more kind of tropical fruit notes and much less of that really citric character. I think when I started this video, I was kind of expecting to end up saying, you know, we should all be using the Philly sour, it's way easier and you get similar results. Or saying, you know, stick to the kettle sour, it's so much more complex, even though it's extra effort. But actually, I can definitely see how there's different uses for these different yeasts, which I guess is, you know, why Lalleman is still producing both of them. So you're going to get loads of citric character, perceived acidity from it, and a real sort of thwack around the chops with this one. What you'll get with this is more of a suggestion of acidity, more of a, a richer, rounder kind of flavour that really will play extremely well when you're adding fruits, particularly kind of richer fruits. So if you really want a lemony tang in your home brews, you want to have that bite, I think kettle souring with a lactobacillus culture is best. If you're looking for something a little bit more pintable, a little bit more rounded, something that could play with some fruit, then I really think that the Philly Sour is gonna do the job for you really well with minimal effort. Um, but that, that's not what we're here to decide, and not what I was here to create. I was here to create the absolute best beer for the Square Root Cola, so we can make the shandy that uh, blew our minds this summer. So now uh, I'm gonna take the bottles that are chilling in the fridge straight down to Square Root. I'm gonna meet Brad there and Robin, and we're gonna be trying these and seeing if I hit the brief and recreated the Fizzy Cola Shandy. God, which one do I drink? Ah, oh, this one. Cheers. So we're back at Square Root after what feels like an eternity, but was apparently only about two weeks. Uh, and I bring, I bring the beer that you briefed me to make, nice. um, which is a dry hop sour with motueka and lemon drop to see if we can recreate this thing. I poured you full glasses, so I really <laughs> hope this works. Now we've, we've had, you know, people calling this a diesel uh, because it's got cola in it rather than a shandy. Apparently that's a thing in Germany. They call this, this sort of beer, cola hybrid, a diesel. I mean, it will have to actually taste good before we start trying to give it a name, I think. All right. <laughs> but here we go. So we're hoping there's enough citrus in there, enough acidity in there to make it a fizzy cola. I'm genuinely more nervous than I've been for any other <laughs> homebrew we've ever done because I'm quite happy with the beer, but it's the one I'm least happy with. I tell you what, mate, on the nose, loving it. Yeah. Loving it. I don't know if that's just the cola, because I love cola. <laughs> it does smell really spicy. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Dry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really good, but it doesn't taste quite fizzy cola bottle enough for mm. me. It's almost like the non-fizzy Haribo cola bottles. But Syrupy. that's what we said this was. Yeah. So all I've, all I've done is water down this beautiful Coca-Cola, is that what you're saying to It's me? not quite fizzy and sour enough, maybe. Right. But I like it, Johnny. Well, the one thing we could do is increase the amount of beer in there mm. to see if, you know, we just didn't quite get the mix right. Top yeah. me up. I'm it's, gonna... It's not definitely my brewing yet, but it's looking that way. Can I give you... So now we're at 60-40, I'd say. I'm gonna go... I'm going for it. You're going... 75-25, I reckon. Now it is a top. <laughs> Definitely getting way more hoppiness now. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. As, as I'm going, as I'm drinking this now, 
it, it, it has got that quality that we needed the beer to bring. So what, what we managed to get is the dry hop element, yes. which we've done many times on the channel, <laughs> and missed on the acidity element, yeah. which was the whole point of the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, even though this is a slight disappointment, uh, I do have a little curveball to throw at you, yeah. which might rescue this particular segment of the video, probably not the whole series itself. Um, and that is because while we were here, Robin, you mentioned cherry cola. And that stuck in my mind and I thought, maybe we could make a cherry sour version to create yeah. cherry cola. So I've brewed, we're using a different souring method, a cherry quick sour Ooh. that we can now try to make a shandy with. Oh. Naughty boy. Very <laughs> delicious though. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope so, Robin, let's hope so. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to go beer first again because I want you to see the colour of this beauty. Mate, oh, that, that is great, dude. Cheeky Vimto, yeah? Cheeky. <laughs> Smells like cherry. Boom. Boom. That's Thank you, start. mate. That looks it's got splendid. A ruby, it does. Rich ruby colour. And the head as well is is a lovely colour. Okay, here we go. Second time lucky. It's a little bit more bitter, but it's. it's the that was, I think there's, the there's loads more kind of spice and complexity, like non-sour complexity to the Philly sour compared to a kettle sour process. So there's loads more going on, like it feels like it's more bitter. I got a kind of mould quality from it, like mould <laughs> cider kind of thing going on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, you're right, it's definitely got like a warming mould cider thing. Mm. Um, but the, the sourness is way more pronounced in this from the Philly. Uh, I don't know whether that's to do with the, the, the fact you've got Loads of cherries in there as well, and it's just... Yeah, I mean, it was sour cherries that I used, yeah. sour cherry puree. The fizziness is there, the cola spiciness. Johnny, this is a triumph, mate. This is really good. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, I'm glad that that would get a good untap rating, uh, but perhaps maybe my, my dry hops I wouldn't, and we'll leave that one to the professionals. But the recipes that I came up with are available for you to brew. I will be perfecting them <laughs> before I put those recipes live for you to buy, and you should be able to get them from the malt miller as well if you guys love shandies let us know what recipes you really advise let us know if it's a diesel let us know if a shandy is different to a radler is different to a top there's a difference there's a difference apparently <laughs> we'll leave it to the internet to tell us what it is um but thank you so much for having us robin thank you so much yeah, for making the beautiful sodas that you do um and sorry about the dry hops hour <laughs> <laughs>